I have a sincere interest in how people relate to various portions of Scripture. Through my years of being a pastor and serving as a chaplain, I've learned a great deal. I remember one time I was visiting with a member of the congregation I was serving. He had been relatively healthy most of the time um, that I had served, but he had to go into the hospital. And so I went to visit him. And when I walked into the room, he looked up and he said, am I that sick? <laughs> I, I, I'm not dying, am I? He said, I, why did you come to see me in the hospital? And whatever you do, don't read that psalm to me. <laughs> so his expectation, of course, was that my presence meant that he was going to be dying soon. And he didn't want to hear the 23rd psalm because he associated that psalm with death and dying. I've learned that the 23rd Psalm, probably more than most other passages of Scripture, evokes many different emotions in people. I do use it often in funerals and memorial services, but I always ask the family first if they would like me to include it or not, because people tend to have very strong feelings about Psalm 23. Because of its frequent use in funerals, many people relate it with death. So this is a picture, I'm sorry, it's not a very good angle, but this is a picture of a plaque that I actually have downstairs in the chapel on the altar. And it belonged to my beloved Aunt Thelma. When she had to move to assisted living, we weren't able to take a lot of things from her house. But this is one of the few things that we took and hung in her room. My aunt loved the 23rd Psalm her entire life, and she found great meaning in reciting it on a regular basis. And every time her pastor came to visit, she would be able to recite that psalm. Now, this went well into her older age. She was over 90 and was still able to say it from memory. It was a deep honor for me to be the last person to say this psalm with her before she transitioned to glory. So I'm sure that many of you have stories or memories associated with this particular psalm. And I want to say that I pray that our focus on this psalm does not create any anxiety for you. And I pray that we will allow God's Spirit to open us to perhaps some deeper layers or new layers of meaning for us. It was a few months ago that our Monday evening Bible study chose to study a book by W. Philip Keller called A Shepherd Looks at the 23rd Psalm. It surprised me that I was the only one in our group who had read it previously. But we agreed when it was over that it helped all of us to learn new things about our relationship with God and with one another. The author calls these shepherd insights because Keller was born and grew up in East Africa, an area that at that time was similar to the Middle East in terms of their practices of herding. Keller also had experience as a sheep rancher and owner. And when his days of being an actual shepherd with real live sheep were over, he became a lay pastor serving in his congregation. He used all of this personal experience and knowledge to give insight into Psalm 23. 
So inspired by this book, I want to focus our thoughts on this theme, learning from our shepherd. In order to learn from our shepherd, we need to focus on our relationship with God from the perspective of the relationship that is experienced between a shepherd and the sheep. Now we do all this in the context of Psalm 23. This Psalm is attributed to David, who began as a young boy, as a shepherd, then went on to become the great king of Israel. And I love how a portion of scripture describes King David, a man after God's own heart. But I've divided our attention to Psalm 23 in two parts. Today is learning to follow. And our second is learning to trust. Now you might say to me, Following God and trusting God really go hand in hand, don't they? They're interrelated. We do need to trust God in order to follow. And yet sometimes I believe God calls us to follow first, even if our trust is not fully developed. But in following God, we can grow in our trust. Of God. Many of you are familiar with Sarah Young, the writer uh, who Jesus Calling, but this is a quote from her book, Jesus Listens. You are my salvation, Lord, so I have good reason to trust and not be afraid. God invites us to follow, and God accepts whatever amount of trust we have as we begin our journey together. We follow God because we have faith that God's goodness prevails. We believe that God is working for our good and wants the absolute best for us. The Lord is my shepherd. And because of this, I shall not want. How do you feel thinking of yourself as a member of God's own flock? Are we content in God's care? Friends, God created us and chose us to be the object of divine affection. We never need lack God's care or God's management, leadership, if you will. In his book, Keller states that the 23rd Psalm could have been given the title, Hymn of Praise to Divine Diligence. You might have to think about that for a while. It doesn't roll off your tongue necessarily. But Hymn of Praise to Divine Diligence. In reality, sheep require endless attention and diligent, meticulous care. Keller states that no other class of livestock requires more careful handling, more detailed direction than do sheep. So we know that as David wrote the psalm, he drew on his own experience of being a shepherd. He was a shepherd, so he knew what care the sheep required. David also knew what it was like to trust in God's care for himself. Now, when David first wrote the psalm, and for many generations afterward, People who heard this psalm were familiar with what was required of a shepherd to care for his sheep. 
But if we're honest, most of us don't really know much about what it would mean to take care of sheep. Unless we take the time to study it and the effort. And so I want to just consider a couple of examples of what a shepherd does for a sheep. And you can apply this in your own lives. First of all, a shepherd makes the sheep to lie down in green pastures. Now we might think, well, of of course, there are beautiful green pastures available, but it really requires a great deal of effort and work to create this green pasture. The shepherd must clear it of rocks and roots and other such things. And the sheep refuse to lie down unless specific conditions exist. They refuse to lie down unless they are free from all fear, free from all pests and aggravation, free from all tension, free from all danger. I find it interesting to note that the sheep refuse to lie down when they are hungry. So the shepherd would have to care for all of these things before the sheep would lie down. And then, of course, in addition to the pastures, you have to have the water. Good water for the sheep to drink. Water that is still so that they can drink safely. Now, because of these two things, both of them require that the shepherd keep the flock moving. This is what David means by the phrase right paths or paths of righteousness, paths that lead to abundant life for the sheep. And here is what Keller writes about the utmost importance of leading the sheep to the best places for them. No other single aspect of the ranch operations commanded more of my careful attention than this moving of the sheep. It literally dominated all my decisions. So think about it. The shepherd has to find the good places for the sheep. And they must know where those places are available and how to get to them safely so that the sheep can flourish. They must stay on the move to take advantage of the best pastures and the best water. The shepherd leads and the sheep must follow. It is in their own best interest to stay with their shepherd. Now, knowing just this much about the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep, consider this observation applied to our relationship with God as written by the author Melanie Red. And she writes this in the first person. Father, I trust you to be the good shepherd, the wise shepherd, the loving shepherd, and the strong shepherd in my life. Can we say this? Can we make a commitment to following our good shepherd? Our author reminds the readers that the life of any particular sheep depended entirely on the type of shepherd who owned it, the person who was in charge of the sheep's care. The same is true for us. When we belong to our shepherd God and follow as one of God's own flock, The quality of our lives is absolutely dependent on God's goodness and faithfulness. And as we go through life with this relationship with God, we learn more about who God is, God's character, 
and God's ability to lead us. We need to spend time in God's holy presence and meditate on God's majesty and might. And when we do this, we will experience God's love and mercy and grace, God's care for us. And so I'm going to review for us the first three verses of the psalm. And if you wish, you can say them with me aloud or in your own mind. But think about the words. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>